I'm going to show you how to create explosions in Unity with a flexible script that you can use in any of your projects. Let's start with setting up the explosion effect you see here. Let's go to the Unity Asset Store and we're going to search for Unity Particle Pack. And I grab this 5.x one here and all you need to do is click add to my assets and make sure you're logged in and then accept. If we head over to Unity, we can open up the package manager window. We can click on the packages drop down here and go to my assets. You probably don't have as many packages as I do, but you should be able to find the Unity particle pack that you just added. All you need to do is click download and then you import the package into your project. And I'm just going to import everything I see here. Now we have a bunch of particle effects that we can choose from. And I'm actually gonna grab this small explosion. Yeah, that'll work. Now that we have the hard part out of the way, let's start on the explode script. Now we want to be able to throw this script on any object and have that object explode. So let's actually get rid of these methods and start with our important variables. So we're actually going to need a delay for how long it takes the object to explode. We're also going to need a radius variable and then a variable to set the force of the explosion. So let's set some default variables here. Let's set the delay to one second, the radius to five meters, and the explosion force, let's set it at something like 1500. And actually, let's go ahead and add a Boolean variable that we will implement the logic for later called explode on collision now let's go ahead and set that to false for now that way when our object collides with a collider it will explode and finally we actually need a delay timer to keep track of the time passed and when we should explode so now let's initialize our delay timer and make sure it starts at zero in our awake method so delay timer equals zero and in our update method, we need to handle our timer and check if it's time to explode. So let's increase our timer every tick. And now let's check if our timer has reached our set delay and explode if so. And we also need to make sure we are not currently exploding our collision. And if these conditions are met, we are going to do our explosion. We need to make sure we destroy our object after it explodes. So now let's define this method do explosion. So basically in this method, we just want to handle our explosion effects and do damage. But in our case, we just want to apply some force to objects nearby. So we'll call it handle destruction. So let's start with handling our effects. But before we implement the logic here, we actually need a variable to hold our effects prefab. I'm just going to call it effects prefab. And simply for further customization, I'm going to define a float that just sets the display time for our particle effects. And I'm going to default it at three seconds. So back in our handle effects method, we want to create our particle effects. So we're going to create an object. I'm just going to call it effect. We're going to call it instantiate. And we want to instantiate our effects prefab at our transform position. And I'm going to call quaternion the identity, uh, which simply means no rotation, perfectly aligned with the world's axis, or you could just do quaternion.euler and zero it out. And then we want to destroy this effect after the display time that we have set. Now it's always best practice to check if a particular object we are looking at calling is null. So if our effects prefab is not null, then we want to do this. So now we get to handle the fun part, destruction. But basically we need to grab all the colliders within the radius of our explosion. So let's create a, an array of our colliders and you're going to call physics.overlapsphere 
and this is how we get to our radius and we want the radius sphere to start at our current position our transformed out position and the radius that we have set and then for each collider in our colliders we need to grab a rigid body if it does exist so collider dot get component and we're going to grab the rigid body and if this rigid body is not null we simply want to add an explosive force so rigid body already has a method for that called add explosion force the force we have set we want to set that force from our current position where we exploded from and then of course the radius we have set we're not exactly done but let's go back to the unity scene view and let's create an object we want to explode so i'm just going to add a sphere quickly here i'm going to create a material so on our object we want to explode we need a rigid body component and then of course we need to add our explode script and then in our effects prefab here we need to add that explosion I was looking at earlier. So I'm going to go to that small explosion prefab and I'm going to drag it over here. So let's try it out and see what happens. Okay. It works, but we're still getting some explosions after the first explosion. And I'm going to try to increase the radius here to see if it affects the other objects. There we go. So let's see about fixing that explosion after the first one. So there's actually two ways to fix this. The first way is to simply set the display time to something smaller. But that's kind of a hacky way to fix it. What you should do is if you have a custom prefab, or in this case I'm using this small explosion prefab, what you want to do is go into it and disable looping. Now it's important to understand that there are probably more effects within your effect, so you should disable looping in all of them. And if it's a prefab, you're going to want to apply all the overrides in that prefab. And so let's make this display time something really long so we can test out if that looping fixed our second explosion effect. Okay, cool. Looks like it worked. So now we have an exploding script that's pretty flexible and can be used in a lot of conditions, but we never finished implementing the explode on collision. So let's go back to our script and we need to add another unity method called on collision enter. And basically we need to check one, are we planning on exploding on collision? And if the script is currently enabled, otherwise this still works if the script is disabled. If so, we're simply going to do what we do here. We're going to explode and then we will destroy this game object. Now if we go back to Unity and test out our script and check explode on collision, as soon as the ball hits the ground it should explode. And it is that easy to create explosions in Unity with a really nice script that you can throw on any objects and make them explode. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.